Welcome back guys! This is part 2 of how to create a dynamic 3D renaissance dress. So let's jump right in and finish our dress. Now to make the waistband, I'm going to count together this length, plus this one, plus this, and plus that. So that's around 560. So I'll take my rectangular pattern tool, I'll click once, and make the width 560. And the height I'm going to make something like, like 40. And there we can see that the waistband fabric is applied to it. If I click this eye here by this texture, we can see our textures. And then taking this texture transform tool, I'm going to zoom up and position it and then scale it. Something like that. Now I want the ends to come together here in the front to meet up to a point. So I'm not going to sew them together in the back. I'm going to sew these two ends here together in the front, so I can make that pointed tip. Shift F to bring up her arrangement points, and then I'm going to click on a point here in the back. Shift F to hide them, and arrange it something like this. And then I'll go up close here, take my Edit Pattern tool, select this point, and holding down Shift, I'm going to draw it out by, let's say, 15. So when it's around 15, I'm going to right-click and type in 15. And then let's do the same thing on this side. I'll draw it out, right click, type in 15. And then the way that I'm going to sew it is I'm going to sew this top length here onto the bottom length of the shirt. So I'm going to select this front pattern here. And where I click, you can see that there's a blue point right here. And if I click here, I can see that there's a blue point here. So I'm going to take my segment sew tool, holding down shift, I'm going to start sewing here, then to here then to here, and then to here. Now I can see that these lines are going straight, but there's something wrong with these seams here. So I'm going to do Shift A to hide her, and then take a look at it. So this is the seam here that's sort of going through her instead of like here just going up to the dress. So I'm going to right click on it with my Edit Sewing tool, and say Reverse Sewing, and there it's nice and straight now. Same for the blue line. I'll select it, right click, and say reverse sewing. Alright, and then I'll press the space bar to simulate. And then I'll take my segment sewing tool and sew these edges together. Now we can see when we simulate that there's a bunch of bunching up fabric here. And it keeps wanting to crawl up and get lumpy like that. Also, it doesn't have that nice sharp shape that I want it to have, it's sort of too rounded. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my waistband and apply the R cotton cloth preset, which is a bit stiffer. And there you can see now it sort of got a bit stiffer and it's not so wobbly, the waistband, and it has that nice sharp shape. Now this is about where I want it to be, on her hips, but you can see that there's all this extra fabric here from the shirt, because the shirt is too long. So to rem remedy that, all we gotta do is select these two lines, and then draw it up. Now you can see the strange thing that's going on here, it's sort of rolling downwards, and that's because of a curve point. So let's take our Edit Curve Point tool and move these points up a bit higher. And then go back and select those lines again, and just draw them up a bit more, something like that. And now there's no, almost no, extra fabric there, lumping up. And if there is a bit of extra fabric lumping up, then we might need to make it even a bit shorter. And also one more thing I'm going to do is just make this a bit less pointy here. And that sort of smooths it out a bit. Let's make it even a touch less pointy. And that's better. Here in the back I'll make just the back a bit shorter. And there we go. Now we have a nice smooth bodice. Alright, so let's make the sleeves. I'm going to create a tight upper sleeve and then a loose hanging, hanging open, open kind of a hanging sleeve. So to create the sleeve, I'm going to count this length plus this length, approximately, it doesn't have to be exact. So let's just run that up to 300. I'll take my rectangular pattern tool, I'll click once and type in the width 300 and in the height let's also do it 300. And there we've got a nice square. Now I'm going to take my split, split line tool 
and right click here on the line and type in the ratio 50% so it places a point right here in the center. Then I'll take my edit pattern tool, holding down shift I'm going to draw that point up till it's something like that. Then right click on the point, convert to curve point. So we've got a curved, curved line here. And then I'm going to take my transform pattern tool and click on the pattern and then we can see this line here that's the exact center of the pattern. Now I'm going to use this sewing tool, which is my free sewing tool, but I'm going to switch to it using my shortcut. And you can set your own shortcuts under settings, user settings, shortcuts, and then just go in there and, and put some letter or number. So hoovering over this middle line, I'll press F, which is my shortcut for the free sewing tool, and then click and sew one side onto here, and then the other side onto here. And how you can tell what to sew which side on is if you sew the first the first seam onto this side, then just take a look at where this side is sewing to. So if you see this seam is sewing onto this one, then this side of the sleeve has to sew onto this part and onto this part. All right, now it has the wrong texture on it, I mean the wrong fabric. So let's call this shirt and sleeve. And drag that onto our sleeve. Now we could just arrange it using our gizmo onto her arm, but there's an easier way using the arrangement points. So shift F to bring up her arrangement points, and then I'm just going to click on one of them, and that wraps it around her arm nicely like that. Now you want to make sure that your seams are straight, and that there's no messed up seams. These are fine, they're nice and straight. And then this part has to be sewn onto this part. So taking my segment sew tool, going to click, and there you can see it's sewing nicely and then simulate. And there we've got a nice sleeve. I'm going to make it shorter because I want it to be up to around her elbow. So I'll take my edit pattern tool, hold down shift and draw it up. Something like that. And I'd like it to be a bit tighter to her arm here too. So I'm going to take this point in by 10, right click, 10, and take this point in, right click and type in 10. And it's still a bit loose. This particular design I'd like the sleeve to be even tighter. It's up to you, of course, how tight you want to make it. So I'll take it in by another 5 from each side. It's very important that you keep the, the same length of this and this. If these two lengths are different, one is longer and one is shorter, you're going to get ugly bunching up at your seam. So let's just take that in by 5, and then take this one in by 5, and simulate. There, that's tight enough. Then I'll select the sleeve, copy, right click, symmetric pasted. Again, go to my texture transform tool, find the center, then switch to my free sewing tool. And sew one side onto here and one side onto there. And here we can see her arm coming through, so all we need to do is just drag on the sleeve till the sleeve comes out of her arm. So that's for the upper part of the sleeve, and then from here I want to have those pretty big hanging sleeves. So because we don't need to simulate the skirt right now, we can make the simulation go a bit faster by just deactivating it. Deactivate pattern only, not deactivate pattern and sewing. So then it becomes blue and it doesn't weigh on our simulation. Now as for the, the big hanging sleeve, I want there to be a lot of fabric, a lot of wrinkles and stuff, so to make them we need to make a very wide pattern piece. I'm just going to lift these sleeves up a bit so we can have some room to make our hanging sleeves. And then taking my rectangular pattern tool, I'm going to make something about like this. And that's way too long, so let's take it down a bit. Something like that, maybe even a bit shorter. And then I'm going to take my split line tool and add a point here in the center. So that's again right clicking on the line and then typing in the ratio 50. Then with my edit pattern tool, I'm going to select these two points, hit delete. And we've got this kind of triangle, and then using my curve point tool, I'm going to curve it out. So it's something more like this, and I think it's a bit too wide up there, so let's just take this in. You can even take in segment points using your edit curve point tool, or using your um, edit pattern tool. Then I'll take my segment sew tool, and sew this onto here, copy the sleeve, symmetric pasted and sew it onto the other side. Then I'm going to copy that 
change the color and actually let's say cancel and let's copy this one I meant to copy that one and change this to hanging sleeve and that's actually going to be a skirt because I want a different color on the sleeve something more pinkish and then I'll drop the hanging sleeve onto the hanging sleeve and then I'll take down the opacity to make it a bit more transparent flip horizontally just to bring the bright side out and then let's simulate so there we've got these beautiful hanging sleeves and if you wanted there to be even more wrinkles then you just make them wider so now that we have the dress made I'm going to add some decoration here around her sleeves and a thin piping line around her neck so I'm going to hide her shift A take my piping tool here and then click click again here and then go around and click on the first point and that's going to make this nice thin line around her neck and we could leave it pink that's sort of pretty or we could click on it and assign any other fabric that we want then for that decoration here in her sleeves I'm going to zoom up close and I'm going to click this 2d graphic tool head over to my desktop and just click on this white square it's just a white square in Photoshop say OK show our textures and there we've got a white square now what are we going to do with this white square well first I'm going to scale it down to be much thinner and then extend it along the bottom of the sleeve and because it's white I can assign any color I want to it so I'm going to assign a pretty pink onto it something like that make sure it reaches the ends even a bit beyond doesn't matter but as long as it doesn't stop before the end then I'll select it copy and paste it and then transform it a bit to make this design I'm after copy that and then Control R to reverse paste it select this one again copy and paste that one up here and of course you can put any design that you want you can also put a seamless trim so if we click the 2d graphic tool we can load in anything that's tileable with transparency even like these flowers and then click say OK and then scale down this texture box and stretch it and then using our texture transform tool we can click and then make it look nice again by scaling it up or down and there you can see we have these little flowers So it's up to you what design you like best. And once you have your texture or your overlays arranged on one sleeve and you want to duplicate it to the other one, simply select it and then go to materials, graphics, duplicate to symmetric pattern. And there you can see now we have the same thing exactly on the other side. Now, last of all, I'm going to activate everything. And here you can see part of the skirt is sort of swallowing up the waistband. So I'm going to set this to layer 1, which makes a little blue outline and puts it on top. So when we simulate, you can see it's nicely on top. And that issue there is solved. Let's put it back to layer 0 because it's having a bit of trouble here in the back. Since it's sewing onto the shirt and then at layer 1 it was giving it a bit of trouble. There we go. Now last of all, to get some nice detail into this dress, you can see it looks rather rough and lumpy now. So to get nice detail into it, I'm going to select everything except maybe this waistband that's not visible below, underneath. It's not this golden one, it's one underneath. And then I'm going to set the particle distance down to 5. You can see it becomes all wrinkly and rumply like some paper, but then when we simulate, after it thinks a little while, it's going to look much, much better. And here we go with the final result of our renaissance dress. Now all you have to do is bring in the pose that you want or your animated character and simulate the dress either in a pose and then export a posed version or animate it and then export the animation. So basically that's it guys and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that it helps you. 
If you want to learn how to quickly create all kinds of beautiful dynamic 3D clothes, check out my Mastering Marvelous Designer training program at cgelves.com forward slash learnmd. To your success!